I did an unusual video about Henry G and Cloud9 recently. The team had been heavily hyped up and had just lost a few games that people thought it shouldn't have done, so there was a lot of drama on Reddit and that lot, with people laughing at the team's failures, and with the players' salaries brought up as a reason for why they should be performing better. I don't normally get involved with the esports side of things, but I thought, with the public interest about the team, and with so many upcoming matches for Cloud9 yet to be played, that it all seemed like a pivotal moment for the team, and an excellent chance to speak with Henry G and to see it all from his point of view, and he was happy to talk about it. When I approached him, I intended to make a video about his decision to make the salaries public, but before long he shared with me everything about the team, what it was like to lead them and so on. It seemed like all this was connected, so the video morphed into a general overview of the team's situation, told from Henry G's perspective. If Cloud9 had become the number one team in the world, then my video would have been an excellent resource to see where it all began, about their early problems that they had to overcome, and Henry G's vision for the future. But that didn't happen. Just a few weeks after this video, the team dissolved. Henry G's long-term plans for it destroyed. That video of mine now gets a lot of comments saying that it's aged like milk. I hope that's referring to Cloud9's long-term plans and not my video about it, because that video has only become more valuable since it was released. That video is a lot like my coronavirus series. It's a snapshot in time that's quickly forgotten about as things change. I admit, I was surprised when Cloud9's team was cancelled. Henry G had said so much about how he was in it for the long term, how he knew that it would take time for the players to gel and for their true potential to be realised. He was so genuinely enthusiastic about it, and for everything to change so quickly was unexpected. So now all that's ended, would I have made that video any differently had I known this was going to happen? And the answer to that is no, I don't think I would have. Recently, Thorin and Rich Lewis discussed my video. I'll link to the whole thing in the description if you're interested. Here's a summary of what they said. I had 100% bet that that three clicks Philip video was a paid thing. It almost did feel like a fucking poff piece, didn't it? Like... If it was paid for, I'm sure Philip would have to dis disclose that. Three clicks Philip is a guy who, like, all of his content is positive in nature, even when it's critical. Fuck off, no one's that nice, you mad cunt. I know. Grow up. Henry didn't even speak on it once. Like, three clicks Philip was just sort of claiming to have walked in Henry's mind and going, I can see that his motivations are pure and... This came as a surprise to me as well. I didn't imagine that my video would come across in this way. I thought I was condensing Henry G's thoughts down into a short, concise summary and telling the story from his perspective. But from those guys, it was like I was being a paid shell to promote the team. I wasn't paid. But am I a shell for producing that content? It's not like I intended to be the truth. That video doesn't represent my opinions on the matter either. It's there to represent Henry G's opinions about it. If you want to know, I have no horse in this race. I don't follow the esports scene, and I learned a lot about it from simply talking to him. If you ask me, that makes me the perfect person to interview him and to produce a video about it. But I thought all this would have been obvious from the way that that video was titled, descriptive, and from the content contained within. It's common online to see a controversial comment being prefaced with something like, I own X product myself, but, or I don't agree with this, but, and I hate those kinds of comments. If you think what you're saying is worth saying, don't try to pander to the masses. I don't see the need to defend that video by saying, now I disagree with this, but, because as far as I'm concerned, that video represents Henry G's perspective, and my opinion on the matter would only serve to shift that video away from its intended purpose. I guess I'd base my style of interview off those previews and interviews that PC Gamer used to do, where they'd speak with a game developer about their project, and they'd share their concerns and thoughts about it. The previews were always a lot kinder on them than the reviews were, because it wasn't there to judge the game, it was there to represent what the developers intended for the game to be, while providing some insight into what it was like to work on that project. But as the reader, I was aware of this, I fully understood why they were done in that way, and I could see the value in those articles, especially after the review eventually came out and the game was slated for being rubbish. The only difference between those interview articles and myself that I can see is that I read my script out for the video, using my voice to talk about it instead of using words on a page. I guess there's the assumption that if I use my own voice then what I'm saying must be my own opinions. That sure would explain why I was criticised for sympathising with cheaters after I interviewed a cheater that one time. But with this Henry G interview, I fully disclosed that I had talked to Henry G about it. There was no money nor promotion involved. Like Richard says, if there had been then I would have had to have disclosed it. Am I the only person who produces content like this? Is this me being an unintentional shell? In this day and age, am I supposed to plaster everything with my own opinions about it? Is that what people assumed my interview with Henry G was? 
I don't know the exact rules for this, but in England there are rules in place to prevent conflict of interest. A news presenter can't then voice an advert since their voice already represents an impartial news source. This is very different to America. It shocks me to see a news anchor so blatantly giving their own opinions about the news stories that they're talking about. It just seems wrong. For me, I still find the idea of paid promotions kind of questionable, yet nothing about my interview with Henry G rung alarm bells for me. To me, that is a perfectly acceptable and fair way of carrying out an interview. Thorin questions why I was using my own words to represent his opinions, as though I had walked into Henry G's mind. And that's because I consider my videos to double up as time-saving tools. That Henry G interview lasted several hours. What I did was to spend a substantial amount of my own time condensing that down to be as short and as concise as I could, before firing that off at Henry G to confirm that he was happy that it represented what he had been saying. That's why I use my own words. That's the reason I don't just upload what he had said originally, because doing that he might as well have just published that on his own YouTube channel, or on a talk show with Richard Lewis. I've applied this style to other things too. That brain computer interface summary video was me getting a 90 minute video and condensing it down to 10 minutes, because I know there will be people interested in that topic who can't justify 90 minutes to listen to it. I don't think my video replaces it, but it acts as a summary, a preview of what the video is about, so that if people listen to that and think, oh this is interesting, then they may well end up listening to the full 90 minute version as well. And just so you know Thorin, you got off lightly. I've considered condensing your long rambling videos down to just a few minutes in length for similar reason. I just haven't, because that would involve watching it in the first place. Three Clips Philip has one of the weirdest fucking ways of talking ever. And it isn't an act, by the way, guys, because I once met him at a Dreamhack. Hello, Thorin. Have you been enjoying the event? Like, I was like, holy <laughs> shit, it's real. 